Documentary films are a constructed form of media, implementing structured narrative and audiovisual techniques as a way to convey truth. Rather than being a first-hand recording of an event, elements are precisely chosen in order to convey the material at hand. This medium is used to inform a viewer on a particular topic, often observing life or the development of modern or historical ideas. Kayana Scutzi, the film in discussion, is a performative style of documentary, a specific genre of documentary that follows the subject of the film in a strictly subjective manner. The filmmakers express the contents of the film personally, often of artistic value, with many interpretable elements involved. Kayana Scutzi uses the following film conventions to convey its messages. Use of time-lapse, camera angles, music, a lack of cohesive structure, the film's development, and use of metaphor. Following the first five minutes of the film, Koyana Skutsi's purpose seems confusing. However, you eventually tune into its style and pacing very quickly. Suddenly the metaphors make sense, and it becomes an entrancing experience. You don't have to be talking to convey a message across. Just as Koyana Skutsi has proven, you have to show it. The power of music and visuals can tell a story just as dramatic as if it was narrated. Originally, director Godfrey Reggio didn't want a title. He wanted it to be a film that is completely up to the viewer's interpretation. However, when the producers forced a title onto the film, Reggio decided that a word that had absolutely no cultural connotations would be more suitable. The title Koyana Scutzi is defined only at the end, a definition created by the director as his interpretation of the word, which is related to the Native American prophecies about the destruction of the environment. This is shown at the end so that the audience doesn't have a preconceived understanding about the film's message. It is completely subjective until they leave the cinema. This definition shown describes the Native American prophecy of global warming before it became an actual concern. Koyana Skutsi means world in turmoil, and this statement reflects the ideas of the natural environment being taken over by technologies and overpopulation. A particularly interesting shot in the film begins with an aeroplane, which is first seen as a hazy fog in the distance. As it drives closer to the camera and comes into focus, our perception of the obscured objects is suddenly changed. The viewer isn't sure of what it is. You can tell that it's mechanical, however the background and foreground merge in a way that makes the shot seem very jarring. This shot feels like a metaphor to the uncertainty of the environment, as the future is being taken over by technology, we are going to begin confusing the natural environment with the mechanical environment more and more. Using the technique of juxtaposition, circuit boards are compared to aerial shots of cities. These shots evoke the metaphor of an ever-growing influence of technology into society. It works far more effectively this way, rather than using an example of people using technologies. Koyana Skutsi instead shows the drastic contrast of the modern world and the developments of high-tech devices. Philip Glass was not initially sold in composing for the film. What gained his interest was Godfrey Reggio's trick in showing him two screenings of the early film, one featuring electronic music by an unknown artist, and the other featuring music by Philip Glass. Glass realised his music was better suited for the film, and soon after began working on his compositions. The use of music in Koyana Skutsi accentuates the moods that each particular shot displays. Use of constantly changing time signatures and an assortment of unique sounds, the soundtrack creates an ambient atmosphere that sucks you into the film. Upon screening the near final version of the film with Glass's soundtrack, Reggio decided to re-edit the entire film based around the music to create a feeling-based structure. As the film progresses, the music becomes more and more complicated and powerful. The particular reason this film broke new ground in cinematography was that it filmed things that had never been seen before, sites that couldn't be reached, and it filmed things that wouldn't usually be filmed in motion pictures. 
Ron Frecky, the cinematographer, filmed Kayana Scotsi with a keen artistic eye. As Godfrey Reggier describes in an interview, the film's efforts were shared equally between composer, cinematographer, and director. Reggier's contribution was only a fraction to that of his collaborators. To be truthful, to work with the likes of Ron Fricke, Philip Glass, my other collaborators, it's, uh, I feel like a, a blind man getting to work with those that can see. I don't touch anything. I don't I don't. I do now have to know about all these things in order to do my job better. But I deal through sensibility, through word, in a medium that's not about words. And at the end of the day, nobody cares what my sensibility is. So I'm very lucky to deal like a blind person, like a uh, illiterate person, like a deaf person, through the tremendous talent of these other collaborators. Each role was vital in creating the film's success. Koyana Skutsi was always meant to be a film based on interpretation. The audience may leave feeling inspired or bored, and they can take as much or as little out of the film as they like. <laughs>